want to uh, get started, uh, I got a couple quick things I got to do my phone while we're getting people on. You guys can comment this really weird photo behind me. It, I'm in a hotel in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, if you've ever been in Boulder, let me know. I don't know why the hotel would want to put that photo up, but you guys can uh, speculate as to why that is. All right, real quick, I got to jump something on. I'm trying to get ready for this. Here we go. We're just about ready. Trying to get something pinned. And I want to talk about CMBS, Commercial Mortgage Backed Securities. Very big things happening in that industry right now. And I want to do something real quick here. So I'm going to paste something in here. Let's see here. I can't do that. Nope, can't do it. All right, we're just going to go for it. All right, guys, here we go. I wanted to bring some information. So this is something that I have been talking about for well over a year. And uh, Jack over at Nobody Special Finance hit me up the other day, and he gave me a story about what was going on in the commercial mortgage-backed securities market. A year ago, I started, uh, over a year ago, I started reporting on this and how I believe this was going to be bigger than the mortgage-backed security fiasco of 2008. And the reason why is because not only is there literally billions and billions, trillions of dollars in mortgage-backed securities around the nation, and they are in everything from your pension plans to uh, 401ks. Uh, they're all over the place, right? A lot of money tied up in, in these, more, these commercial mortgage-backed securities. Um, when we had the entire world shut down and everybody was told to go home and stay in their houses and Zoom came out and the technology behind Zoom absolutely exploded, we saw some transformational shifts in the real estate market that I do not believe are going to come back anytime soon. And I believe that is going to lead to a tragedy in the real estate market. And that is in the commercial space. Commercial mortgages um, have always been held up and been very steady and, and thought of as a good investment because of the health of the economy, right? Well, now with the invention and technology uh, transformations in Zoom and things like that, uh, remote working has become very easily done. It has made CFOs and CEOs alike start really starting to think about how they look at owning office space. And even though I believe that you're not going to be able to farm out 100% of your workforce to you know, remote working, you are going to be in a position, you're going to see companies be able to take some of it and be able to push it off so that they are able to rent less office space and be able to protect their margins, all right? Now, we have a couple different uh, competing uh, problems here. We have the economy actually stalling and collapsing. That is true. We have everything from geopolitical tensions from the West and the East splitting up monetarily, literally, uh, even down to its monetary base, the US dollar, that is being fractured right now. We have that. We have the technological advances, um, like I said, about Zoom and remote working and companies needing less office space. And that is becoming very um, uh, obvious in these news articles that I'm about to share with you. And it gets me very excited. And it should get you excited if you've ever wanted to own a home or wanted to own multiple rentals or dive into commercial real estate. You know, that's something I never got to do when I was early on in my real estate career um, around 2000 to 2006. I didn't get to dive into real estate, commercial real estate because of the amount of money I had sitting off to the side and, you know, how much you needed to put down into those properties. This time, this is why I should get you excited. As these things collapse, you want to be that literally uh, real, like a, a real estate firefighter that's running into a burning building of, of uh, first deed notes and, uh, and, and, and real estate that's literally crashing because people are screaming, yelling, and running out of that building. You should be the one that is ready for it. And that's why I wrote that course, the real estate crash course, because I wanna prepare people for it now because it's so easy to identify what's happening right now in the real estate market and how it's going to get bad in the future. Because once you identify those things, you have the confidence to act. See, most people don't have the confidence to act because they don't know what is coming next. But these are very easily identified uh, time points when it comes to human emotion and how they relate to the real estate market, all right? All right, guys, I'm not gonna, sorry, my nose is running. I'm gonna have some coffee. 
And thank you so much to the 79 people that hit the thumbs up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you enough. All right, there's a couple things we're gonna do. I've got a new story that I wanna go over, but I'm gonna go over a couple of headlines. And I put in the community post on my page, a video that my brother did, wink, wink, on the Real Estate Ninja channel. And it was about one of these uh, articles that I'll just briefly go over, but it goes way more into depth in that uh, video, okay? So first off, let's start with this. This is 21 hours ago. This is out of Bloomberg. Commercial property market freezes, sending bond volume plummeting, okay? Now I know that we're, all of you that are listening to this probably wanna buy residential real estate. You go, Ninja, I don't care about commercial, but trust me, you are going to care about commercial. The reason why is this, I believe, is what is going to set off behind the scenes with the big brokerage firms, the massive lending institutions, the fracture, the panic, the uh, margin calls that are going to ripple into mortgage-backed securities, okay? So this is going to affect residential real estate, but this is a great time to watch this happening right now, right before your eyes, so that you gain the confidence to be able to dive into the market when it's crashing. All right. It says right here, sales of commercial mortgage bonds have fallen off of a cliff, plummeting about 85% year over year as rising interest rates cut into lending volume and defaults spook investors. It says only about $4.27 billion of the bonds that have been issued so far this year, which are down from $29.38 billion at the same point last year, according to the data compiled by Bloomberg, based on deals without government backing, investors blame the Federal Reserve's aggressive, aggressive interest rate campaign, which has made it more expen expensive for borrowers to refinance. Let me stop right there. We just had a quote unquote blowout jobs number, right? Which a lot of us do not believe, but I believe that the government is manipulating. And this is just me, I'm not a financial advisor, financial guru, I'm just an investor, right? So don't take, take this with a grain of sand. Don't take it as financial advice. I believe the government is changing rapidly the way that inflation is um, calculated and the jobs numbers calculated, all right? I've done videos about this. So I believe that you are seeing um, things happening behind the scenes that are not being portrayed in the full light, let's say, to the public, all right? We have uh, job lot numbers and we have inflation that's roaring red hot. As a matter of fact, the government has been consistently wrong this entire year over inflation numbers, right? Well, now we just saw the Federal Reserve only raise interest rates, which affect the mortgage market, 25 basis points. Now think about this. And let me stop real quick and say, I literally thanked everybody for hitting the thumbs up and it's now literally doubled to 186. Thank you very much for that. So the government came out and uh, raised only 25 base points, or I'm sorry, the Fed, which isn't the government. They're not federal and they don't have any reserves. Total lie. And everybody started getting excited. The market started rallying. Um, uh, things started getting really excited because they're getting that much closer to pivoting where the Fed goes from raising rates to lowering rates. And that would be like monetary heroin, you know, right to the jugular. You know, it's like just a rush of cheap, easy money, which would rally markets. Here's the problem. Just recently with those numbers that just came out, it proves that the Fed not only has to not stop raising rates, but it has to get more aggressive. So now the street is starting to price in a 50 basis point hike, okay? Now it's gonna do a couple of things. That's gonna raise the perceived value of the dollar because a lot of savers are going, oh, I could get a little bit more in my savings account, which will not keep up with inflation, okay? So in this scenario, savers become losers. When the dollar goes up in value, it can hit gold. It could hurt gold. However, like we've seen in the last four or five months, gold has actually been rallying even into raising interest rates, right? Because gold investors are seeing an opportunity to start snatching up gold at a cheaper price and silver because they say the end is nigh. The Federal Reserve is breaking the back. And that's what we're gonna talk about just in a second here on commercial mortgage-backed securities. Now, I wanna remind you, I did a video, or no, I didn't do a video with my brother, with Real Estate Ninja, on his channel, Real Estate Ninja, just a couple days ago, and it had um, commercial buildings on fire, right? That's where I got my thumbnail from. Um, and it was about a story, and this is what we're going to go over real quick here. Um, CMBS market gets rude awakening from Brookfield defaults. Now, Brookfield is a large company that just defaulted officially 
on two massive structures, um, one rented by the gas company, and I don't remember what the other one is off the top of my head. You'll have to go check out his channel, uh, down in Los Angeles. Now, why these are so important was uh, these uh, two defaults equated to almost like $750 million, three quarters of a trillion dollars in defaults. And the reason why it's important is because they straight up came out and said, we cannot refinance, we cannot refinance the the loans because the mortgages, the rates have gone up so fast in such a short amount of time, we can't even raise the rents because they were locked in on leases, right? Not only that, um, a lot of people that have leases are simply not paying and have not vacated, all right? That's another sign. So these are massive, massive business uh, structures, large commercial buildings, downtown Los Angeles, and they're defaulting. And they're straight up saying, we can't even, or we weren't even going to try uh, to uh, refinance. We're going to give these back to the bank. Okay. So now that causes these ripples, these massive uh, spooking events, like what Bloomberg was just talking about, where I was just talking about they're getting spooked. Well, this is happening all over the nation. All right. And this is what I want to bring you the behind the scenes. 30,000 square foot view when you're looking down and you see the land. You know, it's like when you get, you're in your hometown and from walk to one side to the next is pretty hard, right? You get up in a plane, you look at your hometown and you're like, it's like an ant could walk across that and make it no problem. And that's what you need to do on the economy. As the CMBS market, commercial mortgage-backed securities are imploding. This is where you get excited because it's going to run all kinds of ripples. One of the ripples is going to do is these bonds that they're trying to sell where they're, they're literally being wiped out. 85% of the bonds are being sold right now, or I mean, just a, a pittance of what it was last year. I mean, it's because the default rates are rising, which means the, the interest rates, the rates are going to rise on those as well. So that is really exciting. It says right here, as the market gets uh, a rude awakening from the Brookfield defaults, the default from the front fund Brookfield DTLA fund office trust investors comes against the backdrop of a U.S. office property sector that is struggling with the surge in interest rates, declining property prices, and uncertainty about corporate demand for workspace. One of Brookfield's two default mortgage mortgages secured a U.S. $350 million commercial mortgage bond issued in 2021. That was just a couple of years ago. And that was when rates were at all time lows. More office owners, even deep pocketed ones like Brookfield are expected to default in the coming months. Now, something that you wanna, uh, and, and the Real Estate Ninja covered it a lot better than I can right now, but um, that announcement about these defaults was actually put out in November by the company. They actually came out in November and said that they are looking at possible defaults. And then here we are exactly 90 days after that announcement, comes out, a new story comes out, we're in default because that's how long it takes to go into official default, 90 days, all right? And if this isn't getting you pumped and excited and getting you ready to get out of debt right now, get your balance sheet, your personal balance sheet cleaned up, get your uh, affairs in order, your credit line, your credit um, uh, statement uh, ready to go, you have a good credit score and then you start saving money on the side, I don't know what we'll do. To be honest with you, this will be one of the, uh, in my opinion, my personal opinion, one of the greatest opportunities next to the Great Depression to buy real estate. I really, really do believe that. Um, okay, here we go. Now, this is the story I wanted to get into. And this is something that I wanted you to, you know, it's not one of those, uh, you've got to sort of call out what, if you've been following me for a long time, put it in the comment section below. About a year and a half, two years ago, I started reporting on Blackstone and BlackRock. And I said, the mighty will fall. And I said, they will crash. And everybody's like, no, they're going to get bailed out. They're going to get bailed out. I said, even if they get bailed out, they will be a, just a speck compared to what they are perceived as now, where they're this monolith, this massive rock, right? Literally one's named stone, one's named rock. And I'm telling you, they are going to fall, okay? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. And people just have laughed and laughed. And I am gonna continue to report on this as it happens. All right, Blackstone's 271 million loan on Manhattan multifamily portfolio hit special servicing. Now I want you to understand, we're gonna talk about this one specific portfolio, which is their Manhattan multifamily portfolio, but they have thousands of portfolios, okay? 
So just because we're talking about this and someone's gonna pop in there real quick and go, oh, Ninja, that's just this sector. That's just this one area. I'm telling you right now, we are gonna have more and more stories of this coming out where they're getting hit across the country and in other countries. I believe they've already had issues in, uh, in Europe as well, all right? It says the 270 million commercial mortgage-backed securities, CMBS, loan on Blackstone's Manhattan multifamily portfolio has been sent to a special servicing according to TREP alert, cred IQ data and sources familiar with the transfer. Let me stop right there and explain what special servicing is. That means one or more items in their documents, in their loan documents are not being met as per their, how they're lined out and agreed upon in those documents. So they're going into what's called special servicing. That's a special kind of office. It's called negotiation time. <laughs> when the banks are like, um, you missed this, you missed that. And they go, yeah, well, uh, we're sort of screwed. And they go, why don't we bring you into the special office and we'll try and figure this one out. Because the banks know, uh, if you guys default, we're going to have, once again, a contagion effect or a ripple effect, all right? That pebble hitting up smooth, perfectly calm, glassy water. And imagine that glassy water is the economy and what how you perceive it, or not you, because you're part of an engineation. You guys are prepared, not scared. But let's say your friends and family that you've been trying to warn about the economy, they just look at the economy as glass. Well, it was good yesterday and last week. That means it's going to be glassy smooth for the rest of the, the week. What you do is you're going to hit that with a pebble and you're going to see those ripples just ripple right out in a circle. And just like bass waves from music, bass waves start out small and as they get longer out, they get larger and more pronounced until they fall down and go back smooth. And that is exactly what happens in the economy. And that ripple or that contagion effect is what these banks are afraid of. So they're bringing them into a special office to start negotiating right now. It says the loan backs the BX 2019 MMP CMBS deal that is collateralized by 11 multifamily properties totaling 637 units in Chelsea, the Upper East Side in Midtown South. Now, let me stop right there and explain too. Large, these are what's really, this is what's really neat about uh, forecasting real estate crashes and booms because they're very forecastable. They're very easy to spot and identify. But what most people fail to understand, and I teach this in the class, is where you are, how to identify where you are in the cycle, whether you're at the, the, the peak or the trough or somewhere in between, or if you're moving back up again. But it takes time. These things take time. And that's what gets me pumped and excited about the real estate market because you have time. However, for those people that go, I wish it would just happen already. That's not the smartest thing, the way to go about this. The smartest way to go about this is going, man, I would have thought it would have happened this year and it's not happening until this year. That means I had an entire year to prepare. That means I have more dry powder, more money in my basket. My credit score is higher. My debt is paid down that much more. That means I am going to be able to explode out of the gate like a racehorse on race day. All right, here we go. Here's a quote. We continue to focus on delivering a best in-class experience for our residents while we work with our lenders on the capital structure. A black phone, a Blackstone uh, spokesperson told Commercial Observer Thursday, declining to comment further. Let me explain that. This is Blackstone trying to freak out because these are public filings that are going to be coming to the public because the economic ninja is following it. And they don't, this is their way of saying, um, all the tenants in there, everything's okay. We're not losing the property. Don't stop paying rent. You see, that's what's going on. Now let's go back to where it said that they secured this uh, loan in 2021. Again, they secured it at rock bottom rates, right? Here's the problem with a lot of uh, real estate investors. They run on super, super thin margins. They're constantly, especially fund managers, they're trying to balance because a lot of people think that Blackstone and BlackRock can't go out of business simply because they're monoliths, they're massive. But what They own all this property. They don't, they actually don't. It is <laughs> BlackRock and Blackstone borrow money, right? That's how they got big. They leverage money and there's a proper way to leverage money. Talk about that in the course, right? To do it in the proper entities. That's what they're doing. I want real estate entrepreneurs like yourself to learn how to take uh, ownership of things easily, safely, in the most safe way possible. That if anything ever hurt, turns around, burns, and, and you lose it, it doesn't affect your personal finances, your family's life, right? When Blackstone does implode, the owners and the, the board, they're going to walk away. 
They're going to walk away with their pay. They're going to walk away with everything they own still. Nothing's going to happen. All right. And that's the problem. Real retail real estate investors do not understand that. They do not understand how to do it for themselves. And you need to be able to do that. That's why I was up in Reno this last week filming with my trademark attorney and my, my uh, a corporate attorney to bring you guys content. And there's going to be some of that that hits this channel um, that is showing you how to protect yourself from liability. Okay. So what they're doing is they run on super, super thin margins and they sit there and they go, okay, we're going to take on this much debt to buy this much property. And we're going to have that margin of profit. So we're going to have our cash flow right there. But the cool thing is, is that means, you know, because we could put, you know, a bunch down on the property and have a bigger margin. But the problem is we want to be able to leverage that many more properties. So we want to put the minimums down. That's what they're doing. They're putting the minimums down on a lot of these properties and they're increasing their cash flow and they're increasing their exposure to the overall real estate market. Because a lot of them, I'm going to be honest with you, are very young. A lot of people that manage money right now are literally around the age of 30 or less. People that got right out of school, they've got their MBAs, their doctorates, they look super, super smart on paper. Here's the problem. They've never been a real investor. They've never invested in markets and they have no idea of real estate cycles. As a matter of fact, most of them may have had a family member that lost their home in the Great Recession, but they have no clue, just completely oblivious. So they're, they are reading the tea leaves. They are drinking the Kool-Aid from the official government numbers. So they're out there just not only, you know, the fat cat, just drinking it all in, taking it all in, going, we want more real estate. We want to be more aggressive. We want to take people's pension funds. Take that, put that down on big property and leverage it and risk it because, hey, if all else fails, daddy government's going to bail us out. But the thing I believe is this one's going to be so big that the government will not be able to bail it out because it'll induce hyperinflation. And because of channels like this or the Real Estate Ninja or all over YouTube, there's all kinds of great channels out there warning people. People will know this time that it was the government's fault. Okay, so that's going to be the difference between today and what happened in 2008. All right. So check this out. It says here the loan was still marked as current as of this month. And according to Cred IQ data, a specific transfer for the special servicing transfer wasn't given in commentary. Uh, the loan was, however, put on this servicing watch list in November for tripping its floating rate debt service coverage ratio. Uh, it's uh, also known as a DSCR trigger. So let me explain that. Um, one thing that happens when somebody moves or a company misses a mortgage payment or misses something that is obligated by them uh, to the servicer of the loan is that they are put on a watch list, all right? They're not an official default until the, the loan terms state that. And usually it's 90 days, okay? So like the story is saying, they're still, they're not an official default. They're now in a special little area. And what I believe you're going to see is the bank say, look, we've got to, this is hitting the press. It's not good. We don't want to spook anybody. Let's renegotiate the terms. And there's a lot of times that banks, because of the size of the loan, they will actually go, look, we can take a hit. We could take a little bit of a hit on our, our terms, um, but they don't want to because then they've got to report to their shareholders. Or they go, we could turn this, we could keep the mortgage rate the same, we can extend out. The bank is totally in the green to be able to make these negotiations, but they can only do it um, enough to where they're not losing money and going to their shareholders and saying that. So that's what's going on. They're putting this little special office, they're in negotiations right now, and they're like, look, what can we do to help you? Because we, we can't have you, <laughs> we can't foreclose on this property because right now commercial mortgages are, are in the dumps we're going to have a hard time flipping this property because it's losing value rapidly <laughs> because people are not paying rents. Uh, and that's where I want to show you guys this stuff in real time. And that's why I wrote the course. That's why I'm bringing you content like this because it's so easy to identify where we are. And as the Federal Reserve, and guys, again, thank you to 490 people that hit the thumbs up. Thank you so much for that. For all of the times you've thought, well, where are we in the cycle? You have to remember this. We just came out of the lowest in history of America mortgage rates. Never been lower ever, ever. But let's look at the possibility of the upside. Well, the upside in mortgages, the last time mortgages hit an all-time high was around, what, 1981, 82, when Paul Volcker spiked rates. Now, nominally, mortgage rates back then were around 10 12%. But because of the inflation, 
that was rip roaring by the late 70s, early 80s, Paul Volcker had to spike rates to where a mortgage hit just over 18.5% for a 30 year fixed. So now, if you don't think that history can repeat itself, then you will be doomed to repeat it. End of story. And yes, I do believe that there will be a day, I believe it'll be in the next few years, where you will see well over double digit mortgage rates. Now you tell me if that is happening. And again, don't take this as financial advice. I'm just an investor. I'm the worst real estate agent in the world (laughs) because I'm an investor. I think about the future. I think about possibilities. And I want five different ways to save my capital and to make money with real estate, right? That's how I'm always viewing every property I've ever, ever looked at. If you think that it can't get there, I just need to tell you, I got some oceanfront property in Phoenix, Arizona. It's going to be amazing because this is going to happen. The Federal Reserve has lost control of inflation and eventually to stop that inflation, eventually interest rates will have to be at or above real inflation. None of this fairy tale crap that the government's putting out. When you go look at a carton of eggs, when you go look at a gallon of milk, when you check out the pump at the gas station, you have to remember that in order to quell inflation, interest rates for a time being will have to be above that. Or the government can just print our way out of that. And that will cause hyperinflation, which so many people want. But what they do not understand is that real wages do not keep up with hyperinflation for the first literally 90% of that time span which means you will be broke and you will lose just about everything. I want people to understand that. They look back on the the inflation of the 70s and 80s and they go, oh, this is amazing because we all got raises in the early 80s. And and look at what we're making now as opposed to the 70s. You know, we're talking about real wage growth. What they forget about was the pain and all the homes that were lost and the horrible situations that caused Paul Volcker to spike those rates in the first place. They forget about all that. Just like everybody has already forgotten about all their friends that lost their homes, or even you lost a home. If you lost a home during the Great Recession, please put it in the comment section. People need to see this because people have seemed to have forgotten. Because even though you lost a home in 2008, I'll bet you're, you're right back up there. You've got a house again. You've got cars. You're back. But the thing is, is this is a teetering, teetering bridge. It's about to collapse again. And we just rebuilt it. But it's still built with the same materials, and it's running over the same river and it's teetering again. But we forgot about the last time it collapsed. Guys, I thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sharing these videos. It really means a lot to me. If you guys want a link, we're almost done. I'm what now 60% finished with the uh, real estate crash course. So it's still 80% off. The second it's done, we're bringing the price up. But guys, I thank you so much for all the feedback about the course and how it's going so far. I want you to be prepared and not scared. And I want to make a million people a million dollars. That is my goal. Guys, the Economic Ninja is out.